Uh, thanks, CM. Thanks for coming. You know we love you. Um, still waiting for my bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. Bacon well done, okay? All right. Um, you know, really terrific uh, effort by our guys today. Um, we were fortunate because of our efforts on defense and offense to build uh, a pretty sizable lead. Um, and we did it by the way we moved the ball on offense. We only had three turnovers at the half. That's a miracle. Um, so I, I'm really proud of the way we built the lead in the first half, 12-point uh, lead going in at the halftime. And then we came out and we did some pretty nice things um, in the first five to seven um, minutes of the second half. Uh, again, the reason why we, we won two games in a row is because of the two guys that are up here. They've just been Unbelievable on both ends of the floor, always guarding our opposing team, the opposing team's best offensive player. Um, Riley was just unbelievable today on defense, start the game. Retton's been solid all, all year. Uh, Riley's been amazing since we've inserted him to the lineup. Uh, so I'm really proud of our guys. I'm not focused as much on how we lost the lead. We had some younger guys in there, some walk-ons, guys who need to get some minutes and improve. I'm glad they've been working hard on our scout team, so I was glad that we were able to get them some minutes. So, um, you know, so I'm, I'm glad that we won the game in the way we won the game. Two-parter, guys. Um, just how's it feel when two in a row a little bit, kind of get that monkey off your back? And do you all feel this is the most complete game you all played so far? Um, I think there, there's been a lot of games where we've we've done what we were supposed to do. Uh, we just might have just fell short or might have even won the game. Um, at the same time, it does feel good to win two in a row. But at the same time, we just want to look at every game um, by itself. So um, we're glad we got the W, just like Coach said. And, um, you know, we'll celebrate it for the rest of today. And then tomorrow, we'll focus on Texas a &M. Yeah, just like Ren said, you know, um, we was more focused, I thought, um, after the win on Mississippi State, we got a little momentum, and uh, we came in and we focused on practice. Everybody did what they're supposed to, and um, I'm just glad we got the W today. Just for both of you guys, in terms of production, this is Jimmy's best game of SEC play. What did you see from him out there, and how big was that to get that from him in the post? I'm seeing Jimmy coming to, into his own. Um, we've just been – Preaching just like Coach has, he's been preaching in him just to play with confidence. Uh, we've been, we've been working on getting him the ball some more and just putting him in a situation where he can play to his strengths and have that confidence because he puts in the work day in and day out. You know, he's always in there working on this left hand jump hook, right hand jump hook. So we want to put him in situations where he can be successful. And to see him do it in the game setting is really big for us and it's big for him. Yeah, Jimmy's a really important part of um, our team, as you can see. Um, just like Mississippi State game, when he comes out and, pr and plays like he does, his energy level, we feed off that. Um, he's our co-captain along with Rhett, and, and uh, he's instrumental in um, our success. Other questions for either Riley or Rhett? Avery, uh, just what's your impression? This this game seemed like one of the more complete games. I mean, you have the five players in double figures, uh, rebound and spread pretty wide. You know, a lot – everybody contributed in, in some form or fashion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, coming into this game, we understood what the situation was. We know where Missouri is uh, with their program. You know, we wanted to just come out and do what we had to do on both ends of the floor. I'm trying to grow these guys into more of a sustainable effort. You know, we got, you know, I would say out of 40 minutes today, we probably played 32 good minutes, whereas normally we play 22 minutes or 18. So trying to get more of a sustainable effort, trying to grow them into, you know, more maturity to be more consistent. But again, three turnovers in the first half, we finished with 13. All right. So when we have three turnovers in the first half, they scored 48 points. Ten more turnovers in the second half, they score 43 points. So just trying to get, trying to stretch them to grow them into maturity. Like I've been, like I told them before the Mississippi State game, there's only ten games left. Tonight, nine. And um, 
but I, I'm, I'm proud of him in a lot of ways, and specifically Jimmy Taylor. Um, he, he's bringing positive energy uh, to our to the start of our games and and during the games. Yeah, I was just gonna actually ask about Jimmy. Just what, just in terms of getting that production from him out of the post. I mean, how well, big is that? I think the po problem is, like I was telling Jimmy, nobody asked Jimmy to go out and get twenty and twenty. Okay, we have realistic goals for Jimmy, so I think the times that he doesn't score, he thinks he's not contributing. But tonight, guess what? He had four blocks, okay? Other people will focus on 11 points. I'm focusing on block shots. I'm focusing on, you know, Jimmy gets assists for us in different ways. Like, did he? does he set a great screen? Is that, that screen's not gonna show up on the box score, all right? Does Jimmy take up space to suck in two people in the paint? Is he being a threat? Now we can get a backside three. So there, there are a lot of requirements for him that are realistic that he needs to consistently do and execute to help our team win. Coach, and talk about the play of Justin Coleman, too. It looks like he's really kind of picked up a little confidence the last couple of games, too. Yep. You know, part of a, a basketball coach is understanding psychology and what goes on in a player's mind. Um, I think for me, as the year has gone on, I've spent more time with our guys behind the scenes, just really trying to get to know them a little bit better and get inside their brain and figure out what's going on in, in the whole overall picture of their life. And uh, just meeting with Justin Moore behind the scenes and changing some things in his routine outside of Coleman Coliseum has seen the help. Coach, understanding the fact that there were some subs in when they cut it from 24 to 9, mm -hmm. in, considering that, did you still see some teachable moments? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a couple of teachable moments. We got the ball there at the end, and, you know, guys didn't make the extra pass. We get fouled and we go to the free throw line and miss the free throws. So we still, our team always, I hate using the word ammunition, but they always give me some teachable moments. That's a good way to put it so that I can continue to try to keep them focused. Uh, because, you know, sometimes we play like a real basketball team. And as I told them yesterday in practice, sometimes they want to be the Washington Generals. But the only problem with that was not many of them knew who the Washington Generals were. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Mike got to start and did some good things out there, but Shannon wasn't able to play. What, what What's the situation? Going okay, forward? Shannon was available to play 15 minutes tonight. I decided not to play him. Uh, did they zone more than you expected? I, I guess partly because of their personnel yep. situation. And did you feel like you, you missed some open looks against the zone? We did. We missed a ton of open looks. And the problem was recognition. When we have a contested shot on the strong side, we want to pass that one. For some reason, we shot that one. When we have an open shot on the strong side, we want to shoot that one and don't even think about it. We pass that one. So um, normally what they've been doing, CSU is playing about 75% man-to-man, 25% zone. They flipped that today. And I think that was more of a personnel situation, not a lot of big guys. And, you know, Pure year is not necessarily a three-point shooter, but he makes two on us tonight. Uh, but, again, our focus was on Wes Clark, and we gave Riley that assignment. We needed to limit his production, and fortunately we did. But, you know, they played a lot of zone, but for us, we got a lot of zone defensive possessions on video so that I can use it, you know, because I, I think we still left about 10 or 15 points on the board because of poor execution. Well, you told us not long ago that uh, every game doesn't go down to the last two minutes. I wanted to ask about that about four or five minute stretch midway through the first half when you really uh, uh, pulled away. What did you see there and, and you know, how, how crucial a stretch was that? Yeah, it was crucial because, you know, guys were out there, you know, when Jimmy and Dante block eight shots between them, that gives us a chance to get some fast breaks and get into our offense quicker and, you know, those guys anchored our defense good. Um, so I, I just think having consistency, staying in the moment, 
playing one possession at a time, taking care of the ball, taking care of the ball, and taking care of the ball, okay? Again, you know, when I got on campus and talked to Coach Saban, he would be proud of me for making that statement that I just made. Ball the ball the ball, okay? We got to value the basketball. Perhaps your toughest game might be right before you. You know a thing or two about the Aggies. Does that help you in preparation, and is Junior going to get to help preparing as <laughs> well? Well, first of all, Jen, we don't ever take anything for granted. There are no assumptions. We're going to go in there like a clean sheet of paper like we've never seen them before, even though we spent the year watching them and being behind the scenes. So, yes, Junior will give us some information, but at the same time, you know, we got to execute. We got to execute. They're an outstanding team. You know, Billy Kennedy's my homeboy from New Orleans. We have a very good relationship, and it goes back 20 plus years. He's done a nice job, and also it's it's a an example of an oven approach. Okay, he, his team's been in the oven for four or five years, and now they're good. It's not a microwave approach. It's not an overnight sensation, right? They've stuck with Billy. He's had a chance to build it and build it and build it and their team, you know, has gotten better. So he's a great example of perseverance and patience and an, and, a, and an administration that has patience with a coach. So we won't take anything for granted. They have an outstanding team. Obviously, they got two kids on their team that I know very well that have spent time, you know, at my house, and um, now they're on the other side. Coach, we kind of talked with the players about this, but how important was it to go 2-0 and this weekend against teams that were kind of similar to you as far as where they are in the standings? You're right. Is that Hey, I told them I'm not going to lie to them. We're right there with those teams. we got to try to break out of that pack. And um, the schedule I've been – I told them a week ago, the schedule's leveling out now. You know, there's no more two games in 36 hours. You know, we're not playing at Ole Miss, and Kentucky's not coming in 36 hours later. We're, the schedule's leveling out now. We can get in the rhythm with practice, get in the rhythm with games, playing another game at home. we got to protect our home court. And hopefully, I, I, I really got to believe that our students are going to come out and support us against Texas A&M. And I got to believe that, you know, we're going to have more seats filled uh, for Wednesday night when you bring in a team like Texas A&M. That's one of the best teams in the country. All right, thanks.